By 2002, Matthew Stover had written a historical fantasy duology, the Hearts of Bronze series, as well as the first two volumes in his Acts of Cain cycle, Heroes Die and Blade of Tyshawl. Traitor would mark the first of Stover's four Star Wars novels written over the next few years, and plays to his interests, tons of philosophical discussions, and a handful of intense, violent action sequences. Traitor made it to number nine on the New York Times paperback bestseller list for the week of August 18th, 2002, and was ultimately on the list for two weeks. Circa 2002, I remember there being loads of discussions on the Force.net message boards about Traitor, specifically agreements or disagreements about Verger's motives and her revelations of the Force. So, a brief summary. Coruscant has fallen to the Yuzen Vong conquerors, and Jason Solo is now the ward of Verger, a Yuzen Vong accomplice with mysterious motives. She promises to teach Solo new ways of perceiving the Force, but at what cost? Right off the bat, from the dramatis personae, it's obvious that Traitor is going to be a lot different than the other New Jedi Order books we've encountered thus far. There are only six characters listed. Of those six, two are minor characters, the War Master Savon Law and the Master Shaper, which leaves us with four. Ganner Rysod, Jason Solo, Naminor, and Verger. We get three of their points of view in various sequences, but Verger's motivations remain a mystery both to those around her and to the reader. Traitor's also different in that for the first time we get chapter headings. It's not just one, two, three, four, but titles like The Belly of the Beast, Home Free, Traitor, which gives you an inkling of what is going to come in each section. Of all the characters, we are in Jason's head the most, which makes sense because this is Jason's book. But unlike Dark Journey, which took Jaina on a more traditional journey, I find Traitor a lot closer to Greg Key's Edge of Victory Conquest in that Jason is put in the middle of this alien environment forced to survive, and forced to reevaluate his way of thinking. The prologue and the first chapter deal with Jason in the embrace of pain. Verger strips him of his forced sense, and he suffers. He suffers horribly. From there, he is sent to work in the Durham nursery on the seed ship. He causes mayhem, he ends up on Coruscant, which has now been remade into the image of the Yuzenvald's lost homeworld, Yuzentar. He journeys across Yuzentar until he finally makes it to the Solo's old apartment, where he is recaptured by Verger and the Yuzenvald. The final section is mostly from Ganner Rysode's point of view, but is also from Jason's as well, and really shows how far he's gone and how much he's grown and changed over the course of this book. Jason's only 18, but he matures a lot, perhaps too much. When Ganner sees him, he looks like someone prematurely aged, who's gone through horrific things that have changed him both emotionally, philosophically, and physically. Jason still complains and questions things a lot, but I find it easier to accept in Traitor because I can't see anyone else going through what he's gone through and not whining and complaining and questioning it along the way. Verger's methods are harsh, and the hardest part is that her motives are completely unknown to us. At the end of Star by Star, she captured Jason, she handed him over to the Yuz involved. But everything we see her do, there are multiple interpretations to why she's doing this and how far she's taking it. When Jason's in the embrace of pain, that could be something 
that she had them do, or is she trying to moderate what the youths involved are doing to the best of her abilities? Likewise, she guides him across the surface of Yuzin Tar, but on multiple occasions she leads him right into the hands of the Vald. Verger's actions are confusing, but her words are even more so. She constantly reiterates that everything she tells him is a lie and he will find no truth in her. But at the same time, she does reveal things about the Force that change his way of perceiving it. Naminor also has viewpoint sections here, but if anything, his viewpoint sections just make him come off as a moron. Naminor doesn't believe in the use involved religion. Naminor only believes in himself. But I felt like he was perhaps too believing of Verger and Jason, which led to him getting into another typical Nominor situation where he's in deep doo-doo. And Ganner Rysode goes out in a blaze of glory, a great ending for the character. When we first met Ganner in the Dark Tide duology, he was pompous, he thought very highly of himself, but he was quickly humbled and realized that the Yuzin Vong and the galaxy as a whole is a lot more unknown than he had realized. So when we first meet Ganner, he's desperately trying to be the hero, only to change his mind and try to dial back that aspect of himself and actively not try to be the hero. He searches for this rumor that Jason Solo is still alive, despite the fact that he doesn't even really like Jason. And he walks right into a Yuzin Vong trap. Ganner doesn't trust Jason. Ganner thinks he's a traitor to the New Republic and the Jedi. But in the end, Ganner also recognizes that he can either take the coward's way out or he can be a hero, that maybe that's what his destiny was, one last heroic stand. I love Ganner's fight before the doors of the old Senate building. I love that perhaps he has the highest kill count of anyone else in the Yuzenwald War by the end, that what he did is so memorable, it becomes a part of the Yuzenwald mythology so that he will live on in a garbled, distorted way, lulled into the future. And on the illusion front, nods to other works of literature in the past, there are quite a few here in Traitor, some subtle, some much less so. Jason's entire journey here feels like a descent into the underworld, and the scenes on Yuzin Tar in particular really give me that vibe of Orpheus or Heracles descending into the underworld, and like those fortunate few, Jason is able to return to the world of the living. In the prologue, Vergere tells him that he's dead now, that he's mourned by everyone, and she strips him of the Force in consequence because the Force is only for the living. Jason's entire emotional journey is taken with the understanding that he's dead, he has no chance of getting out of this alive, and so he takes risks and does things that the previous Jason probably would have never done. I also got a lot of vibes of Dante's Divine Comedy, but in particular Inferno. Like Dante, Jason in the beginning finds himself lost in a dark wood, and he has a guide to show him the way, although Vergere is not half so helpful or benevolent as Virgil was. Jason also sees a lot of horrors along his path, but whereas Dante sees horrors and just they reinforce what he already thinks. Jason sees these things and they really make him question and look deeper into what he believes and why. Also, this may have just been me being a big Garth Nix fan, but Vergere's repeated line about, is it what the teacher teaches or what the student learns, reminded me a lot of the line from 1995, Sabriel, does the walker choose the path, or the path the walker? 
So much of the impetus is on Jason here, not just to listen, but to process what Verger says and decide if he believes it or not and whether he's willing to incorporate her ideas or not. And finally, I love Ganner's last stand, but Ganner's last stand is the speech that he gives. No, I am Ganner. None shall pass. None shall pass. To me, feels like a very overt nod to Gandalf's speech on the bridge of Khazad Doom in The Fellowship of the Ring. In the book, it is You Cannot Pass. And in the 2001 movie, it becomes You Shall Not Pass. Of course, to take that back further, Tolkien as a World War I vet was probably inspired by the French slogan from the Battle of Verdun, which was Ils ne passeront pas, or they shall not pass. So in a way, Ganner saying none shall pass has its roots all the way in French propaganda from World War I. And I think what makes Traitor so successful as an underworld tale is how much the world of the Yuzenvon is so weird and strange and alien to Jason and to the reader. In some of the New Jedi Order books, the Yuzenvon organisms and creatures just seem like biotech analogs for existing Star Wars technology. But so much of what Jason encounters is absolutely foreign, completely unknown to anything he's encountered before. The scenes, especially on the former Coruscant, now using Tar, really emphasize that, that he can pick out the pieces of the Coruscant that was, but so much of it is new, this dangerous, threatening, muggy jungle that has taken over the planet. But I did have some issues with Traitor as much as I really enjoyed my reading experience. Two of them are minor and one of them is much more major. First, I complained about James Lucino in the Agents of Chaos duology that Lucino loved himself a good big juicy thesaurus word and so does Stover. On a scale of flat prose to purple prose, a lot of sections definitely tipped over towards the side of purple, but I didn't mind it too much because it fit the overall feel of the story. So I could forgive the more purple prose bits because I guess I could see what Stover is trying to do with them and they fit with his overall style. Second, I felt like the structure of the story as Jason moved deeper and deeper and deeper into the world of the Yuzen Vaughn worked very well, except for chapter 9. Chapter 9 is the belly of the beast, when after running from the revelations at the former Jedi Temple, Jason accidentally gets swallowed by this Yuzen Vaughn beast, finds other people in there, and then the chapter ends and most of the revelations that he came to in the belly of the beast we don't get until chapter 10 home free and i don't think those were really needed and i think i might have liked it better if he fled straight to the solo apartment rather than that sort of side story section but my biggest issue with traitor has to come down to Verger's philosophy of the force there are so many bits where she'd say something, I'd be like, oh, that's so good, yes. But then also bits where she would say something and I would go, no, no, that's not right. No, I agree with Jason, you are wrong. As far as I can find in interviews, Stover really never got into this online beyond saying that he just wanted to take the view of the force back to the more nebulous concept that we had gotten in 1977's A New Hope. And if anything, he wanted the changes that came out of his novel to just be for Jason and possibly for other characters to look deeper within. If I had to summarize Verger's philosophy of the Force, it seems to be that the Force 
is neutral. There's no dividing line where on one side we have the light side, on another side we have the dark side. That there is good and evil, but it comes down to the individual, the actions that they do, their motivations, what's inside them is what makes it light side or dark side, but that the force in itself is neither. But back when Jason and Verger are journeying across Yuzentar and they come to this giant crater, Jason, even without the Force, has this great sense of unease. He sees that there are predators who are killing prey, and Verger says that that's the dark side. But I agree with Jason here. No, that's not the dark side. That's natural. That's just the way things are. And I think, for me, the danger of the dark side and what makes it so alluring is not that it's natural, but that it's your intentions if you do something selfishly, if you do something as a result of corruption or malice, that's the dark side. And something that's just part of nature wouldn't be the dark side. And it felt too like sometimes Vergere was all over the place. That She confirms at one point that if there's any darkness in what you do, it comes from your own heart. And I was like, yes, I agree with that. But then she'd also say things like, what the Jedi have perceived as being the dark side is just the raw, unrestrained power of the Force. And I'm like, no, I mean, I can agree that the Jedi, in trying to make a framework to explain how the Force works, would perhaps de-emphasize that sheer power part of it, and making light side versus dark side come down to just your motivations it doesn't quite sit right with me either. I guess if anything, I'm upset that I'm rereading Traitor now and not back when it was released because I would love to see what other people think of this. Almost 20 years out from the book release, most of the reviews online just come down to if people liked it or not, and there's very little dealing into the ethical and philosophical ramifications of Verger's revelations to Jason. I guess it boils down to, I like this concept that the Force itself is not good or evil, but it's how you approach it and what you do with it. With the caveat that I do think that this can definitely be debated in great detail, and I think this is both Traitor's greatest weakness for me and its greatest strength, that it introduces this new way of using the Force you may agree with it, you may not agree with it, and I find myself somewhere in the middle where some of the parts felt revolutionary, but some of the other parts did not sit right with me. Ultimately, I think Verger teaches Jason that he is not at the mercy of some external force, that Jason, up to this point, had always viewed the dark side as something outside of himself, that he feared that would affect him. I think a lot of the Skywalkers and Skywalker adjacents have had to deal with the ramifications of Darth Vader's legacy. Luke's one, Anakin was one, and Jason is one. And Jason saw it in the way of this external thing that he feared would drag him under, influence what he did. And the most important thing that Verger taught him was that, no, it's not anything like that. If you blame everything on an external force, you're not taking responsibility for what you do and what you feel inside. So, in short, it's really easy to just rush through Traitor because it has a very nice pace and the way the story is structured, things move at a good clip. But at the same time, I think there's also something to be said for taking it slower, for thinking critically about all these revelations that Verger reveals to Jason about the nature of the Force, and questioning them, because that's the greatest strength that Jason has, is questioning things and thinking about them in depth. It's short, it's dark, 
what happens to Jason in, on multiple occasions is horrific. But I think it's in my top three of New Jedi Order books so far, just because I loved how alien the Yuuzhan Valn and their creatures and their world felt. And I'm also interested to see how other authors will use Stover's revelations about the nature of the Force in the books to come. So next time, I'm going to be reading the fourth hardcover release in the New Jedi Order series, Destiny's Way by Walter John Williams.